بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلوات الله وسلامه على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd just like to start by saying what a wonderful opportunity it is to be able to gather together in one of the houses, from the houses of Allah Azza wa Jal, to study the seerah of our Messenger Salawatullahi wa Sallamu Alaihi. And we should, whenever we get a really good opportunity to do something, we should first of all show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we show gratitude to Allah azza wa jal? There is a key to this in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'malu ala Dawood a shukra. Act, O family of Dawood, in gratitude. So gratitude is all about acting, it's all about doing something. And like many of the scholars said in the ancient times, the zakah of knowledge is to act and to share it with others. To act upon it and to share it with other people. So we want to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our tongues and with our actions. By showing him or by acting upon what it is that we learn in this class and putting it into practice and not making it just knowledge that is just, you know, stored in the brain. Because it's easy to store knowledge in the brain. But it's very hard to act upon that knowledge and to implement that knowledge and to call other people to that knowledge. And while we are sharing our thanks and our gratitude then I would like to just say a word of thanks to the Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities Department of the Government of Dubai for arranging this excellent uh, short course, inshallah ta'ala, over two days, which will cover, inshallah ta'ala, from my perspective, the fiqh of da'wah from the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'd also like to extend my thanks and my gratitude to Kalima Islamic Center, whom I work with here in Dubai for facilitating for me to be able to come here tonight, to be able to spend this time with you. So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed we ask Allah azza wa jal, to make this on the scale of their good deeds, Yawm al -Qiyam. Before I start the topic, I also want to make a small disclaimer. It's only a little one. A word about authenticity and the seerah and what the limits of our discussion will be. So it's a mini disclaimer on this topic. In general, I'm going to focus upon the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. But in the beginning, and probably most of what we cover tonight, will be more geared around an introduction to the topic so that we can take more practical examples uh, in tomorrow's session, inshallah. So we won't limit ourselves to the seerah alone. We will also look at some of the ayat. And there's no doubt that there is no conflict between those two. Because the Prophet wasallam used to embody the Qur'an. He used to be like a walking Qur'an. Everything that he did reflected what the Qur'an said. So we aren't going to limit ourselves only to the seerah and especially this evening, a lot of what we're going to talk about is an introduction and setting the scene for the topic. And in terms of authenticity, we always try our very, very best to make sure that the knowledge that we relate to you is authentic. 
However, on the topic of seerah, this is a little more difficult than other topics. Because the seerah in general has a different standard of authenticity to, uh, shall we say, the hadith or the, uh, yani the, 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 the Quran or something like that. And the seerah has a different standard. And we don't quite hold seerah to exactly the same standard that we hold hadith to. So inshallah ta'ala we'll be narrating you well-known and well-established and well-recorded uh, events in the book of seerah inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and we'll be backing those up with ayat and ahadith which are authentic from the book of Allah and from the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now I've broken this part of my bit of the course. I've broken it up into four topics. If we can cover two today, that will be excellent. And two tomorrow, even though tomorrow's session is a little bit longer than today. So I'm hoping to cover uh, two today, or at least as much of them as we can. The first one is an introduction to the virtue of da'wah and the obligation of giving da'wah. Because the scholars, the ulama, generally, when they begin a topic, they begin with the virtue of that topic. What we call fadail al-a'mal, the virtue of doing good deeds. Because unless we know that topic, we don't feel motivated to get into the main heart of the topic. We don't feel, you know, we don't feel the energy to get involved. So it's always good to know the virtue of what you're about to get yourself uh, involved in. And it's good to know the hukum, the ruling. Is it wajib? Is it mustahab? We need to learn the ruling of giving da'wah. Just as an introduction. Just as an introduction. Then once we finish this introduction, inshallah, we will go on to talk about the characteristics of the da'iyah. What are the sifat of the person who gives da'wah? What kind of characteristics should that person have? What kind of manners, what kind of behavior, what kind of standard should they set for themselves? And we will here begin giving examples from the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. So we'll give some examples from the seerah of the sifat, the characteristics that are befitting for the one who gives da'wah. Then tomorrow, insha'Allah ta'ala, we're going to talk about the early da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the seerah. And why have we chosen the early da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is perhaps the easiest example from the seerah, the early da'wah, the da'wah in the early days of Makkah and the years that followed. Because the Prophet ﷺ was dedicating 100% of his time to calling people who were not Muslim to Islam and purifying people's belief in Allah. And so it makes sense to study that time when we want to study the basic means of approaching non Muslims to call them to Allah. And the second reason is because the fourth and final part of what we're going to talk about, inshallah, is the examples from when the Prophet ﷺ sent people out to give da'wah. And this is from the Madani period, from the time in Medina, when he sent out, not all from the time of Medina, because what maybe towards the end of the time in Makkah, when he sent people out to give da'wah. What instructions did he give them? How did he teach them to give da'wah? What did he teach them? Insha'Allah ta'ala, we will study uh, this topic 
tomorrow bi idhnillah ta'ala so the virtue of da'wah the obligation of da'wah the characteristics of the da'iyah the early da'wah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the examples of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sending people to give da'wah and teaching them how to do it i just want to begin by just saying a few words relating to an ayah allah azza wa jal said ya ayyuha an nabi inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashshiran wa nadhira wa da'iyan ila allah bi idnihi wa sirajan munira surah al ahzab ayah number 45 and ayah number 46 o prophet we have sent you as a witness and as a bringer of glad tidings and a warner and as a da'i as a caller to allah by his permission and as a shining light or a bright light Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophet as a da'i, as someone to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what he sent his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. That was the job that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. And that means that all of the seerah from the beginning to the end is a manual for even in the topic of al maghazi the battles that the Prophet ﷺ took part in, it's like a manual for da'wah. Because the commander, before he would go to fight, he would go and give da'wah to the people. And he would give them a chance to accept Islam. So even in the most remote parts of the seerah, there are so many lessons about how to give da'wah. So many lessons about how to give da'wah. So in reality, we could pick any part of the seerah that we wanted and we could find examples of how to give da'wah. Because that was the job of our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every day, all day, to call the people to Allah Azza wa Jal. And so the examples are many. But we're going to pick some that are perhaps easy for people to understand. And inshallah, some that will be of benefit to everyone. Uh, and some that are the most relevant to the points that we are going to make. But we're just going to begin, just before we get into the seerah, with this first chunk that I want to do, which are, relates to the virtues of giving da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah number 25. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبَلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ We never sent any messenger before you except that we revealed to them that there is no God worthy of worship except me, meaning except Allah, fa'budun, so worship me. Al Imam al Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala said in his tafsir every single messenger, the core of their message and the root of their message was to tell the people or to invite the people to worship Allah alone and with no partner. And to explain to the people that Allah is the true God who deserves to be worshipped. And that everything that is worshipped besides Him is falsehood. So it's not just our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent to give da'wah. Every single prophet that was sent, every single messenger that was sent, it was revealed to them 
to call the people to worship one God, one God alone, La ilaha illallah, and to dedicate all worship to Him and to reject the worship of anything else. And so this tells us that one of the virtues of da'wah, and this is enough of a virtue, if I just stopped here, we could, we could finish the topic of virtues right here. That one of the virtues of giving da'wah is that you are following the job of the prophets and the messengers. That was their job. They were not famous for business. They were not famous for some sort of technology or some sort of trade or some sort of skill. Their fame and their reputation and their seerah is all about giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was their wadifa, this was their job. And so this is what we try to emulate. As Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us to do, فَبِهُدَاهُ muqtadi. Take their guidance and be guided by it. Take the guidance of the prophets and the messengers and use the guidance of the prophets and the messengers as your guidance. Take it as your guidance. And one of the former things or one of the foremost things that you see in their guidance is that they called to Allah Azza wa Jal and that this was their main concern and their main job. From the virtues of da'wah is a hadith narrated by an Imam Muslim and Ashab Sunan that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Man da'a ila huda kana lahu min al-ajr mithla ujuri man ittaba'ahu man ittaba'ahu la yanqusu thalika min ujurihim shay'a Whoever calls to guidance gets the same reward as those who follow him without their reward being decreased in any way. You know, it's often a big discussion people have about giving worship, gifting worship to the Prophet ﷺ. They say, you know, when I go for Hajj, should I sacrifice another animal for the Prophet ﷺ? Should I pray a prayer and, and make the intention that the reward from this goes to the Prophet Wasallam? We say to them, no. Not only because there is no evidence for it in the Sunnah, but because it already happens anyway. Because whoever calls to guidance gets the full reward of everyone who follows them. How did you learn how to pray? From the Prophet Wasallam. How did you learn how to sacrifice? From the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How did you learn to recite the Quran? From the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he automatically gets a copy of every single reward that you get. So you don't need to give him any special thing because it's not allowed in Islam, it's not permissible. But also it's automatically given to him anyway. If you can be someone who calls people to Allah, then insha'Allah ta'ala, everyone that listens to you and everyone that follows you, all of the good that they do because of what you said and what you did, you will get a copy of that good. And let's face it, Ya Ikhwan, we as, as, as individuals, as Muslims, we are sinful. We make a lot of mistakes. If I'm not mistaken, it was Imam ibn Hazm, rahimahullah ta'ala, in some of his letters, who spoke about Al-A'raf, the people whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal. He said, by Allah, I don't know how I can do enough good deeds to be from among them. I don't know how I can do enough good deeds to be among the people of Al-A'raf whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal. Not those people who go to Jannah immediately. But how can I do enough good deeds to even be equal to the sins that I do. One of the ways that we can accomplish this is by giving da'wah. Because when we give da'wah, what happens? We get the reward of the people who listen to us and follow us. And so even though we can't do enough 
to balance out all the sins that we do by calling people to Allah, perhaps we can make up for that by gaining extra good deeds that we would not normally, we would not normally gain. And Al Imam Al Bukhari narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَوَاللَّهِ لِأَنْ يَهْدِيَ بِكَ لِأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعَمِ And in a narration, خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِمَّا طَلَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسُ وَغَرَبَتْ By Allah, for Allah to guide a single person by you is better for you than the red camels. And the red camels were the best of wealth in that time. I mean, think what is the best of wealth in this time? I don't know, like what particular car, what house, what palace, what gold yeah, is the best of wealth in this time? The best of wealth in the time of the Prophet wasallam was the red camels. For Allah to guide one person, not a thousand, not a hundred, not ten, just one single person is better for you than the, the best of wealth. And not only that, in another wording, it's better for you than everything that the sun rises and sets upon. Imagine all of the dunya, the sun rises, the sun sets. One person to be guided through you is better for you than everything that the sun rises on and everything that the sun sets upon, the whole dunya. Just one person to listen. Now imagine you spend your whole life giving da'wah. Inshallah, at least one person, bi'ithnillah, at least one person will listen to you. It's better for you than the dunya and everything that is in it. And if we contrast that, if we contrast that, or if we first of all, we'll take the statement from Surah Ali Imran, that Allah Azza wa Jal said, Kuntum khayra ummah. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 110. You are the best nation that has ever been brought out for the people. Why? Because you tell the people to do good and you stop the people from doing bad and you believe in Allah. What is the greatest example of telling people to do good? What is the greatest example of Al-Amr bil Ma'roof? The greatest example is to tell people to worship Allah alone. There is no Ma'roof greater than telling people to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And there is no Munkar which is greater than a Shirk Billah, than making a partner with Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no Munkar, there is no evil which is greater than that. So the best of things that you can tell the people to do and stop the people from doing is to tell the people to worship Allah and to believe in Allah and to tell the people to avoid making a partner with Allah and to avoid worshipping others besides Him. And this is what we call da'wah. That's an excellent summary of what we would term da'wah. Telling people to worship Allah, stopping people from worshipping everything besides Allah. That is a da'wah ilallah. That's what da'wah is. And we are the best ummah as long as we do these things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us saying, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 104. Let there be among you a group of people who call to good, they give da'wah, yad'oon, they give da'wah to good. They tell people to do what is right and they forbid people from doing what is wrong and they will be successful. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And this word hum is like ta'keed, it's an emphasis. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ It's they, those people, not anyone else. It's those people who will be successful. So if you want to be successful, and I think most of us would quite like to be successful in our, in our lives, and most of us would, would be happy to be successful, want to be successful, give da'wah. 
Because Allah Azza wa Jal promised that the one who gives da'wah will be successful. Contrast that with Surah Al-Asr. Wal-Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. By time, mankind is at loss. You are going to lose unless you do certain things. You believe and you do good deeds and then you go and you give da'wah. How do you give da'wah? وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقْ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ They tell the people, they advise the people to the truth. And the greatest example of advising people to the truth is advising people to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and to leave what they worshipped besides Him. And then they advise one another to have patience. And this is a da'wah ila Allah. Giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at the end of the day, if you look at it, success is for the one who gives da'wah and loss is for the one who abandons giving da'wah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to help his religion. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu kunu ansar Allah. Surah Saf, ayah number 14. O you who believe, be supporters of Allah. And help the religion of Allah. Help it to grow. Help it to flourish. How do we help the religion of Allah to grow and flourish? By giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, or before that, Allah azza wa jal said in Surah Muhammad, ayah number 7, Ya ayyuha alladheena aman, in tansuru Allah yansurkum, wa yuthabbit aqdama. O you who believe, if you support Allah, you support the religion of Allah, you give da'wah, that is one of the major ways that we support the religion of Allah. Allah will give you victory. Allah will support you. And Allah will make your feet firm. Allah will give you a sabbat. Allah will make you strong. And Allah will make you firm. And the Prophet ﷺ said, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ أو كما قال, The most beloved of people to Allah. Who does Allah love the most? The one who benefits people the most. The one who benefits people the most. Who benefits people the most? Can anyone benefit someone more than the one who goes to a person who is not a Muslim and then calls him to be a Muslim? There is no doubt that this person benefits people more than anybody else. The person who goes to someone who is not a Muslim and then helps them to see the wisdom and the beauty of Islam and to become a Muslim, then there is no doubt that this person is from among the most beloved of people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ Indeed, Allah and His angels لَا يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى مُعَلِّمِ النَّاسِ الْخَيْرِ they give salah and yani they make and yani for the angels they make dua yani, or for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yani Allah azza wa jal mentions you with the angels for the one who teaches people good in some narrations it's mentioned hatta namla fi hujriha wa hatta al hut fil bahar even the ant in the ant hill and even the fish in the sea make dua for the one who teaches people good. Can you teach people good any more than the one who guides people to Islam? This is the best example of teaching people good. And there is no doubt that giving da'wah is one of the examples of striving in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. In Surah Al-Furqan, فَلَا تُطِعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا 
Do not obey the disbelievers. وَجَاهِدْهُمْ Strive against them. Be he with what? With the Qur'an. And you can't fight somebody with the Qur'an. You don't like go and start a war with the Qur'an. The meaning of this is to use the Qur'an to destroy these false religions and these false beliefs and these false ways of life and take the people min al-dhulumati ila nur from the darkness into the light. وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا kabira, A great jihad, a great struggle to call the people to Allah Azza wa Jal. Those are some of the virtues of giving da'wah. So now we have to ask ourselves, okay, we learned some of the virtues of giving da'wah. What is the ruling of giving da'wah? So let us look at some of the ayat that give us the ruling for giving da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ let there be among you, and those of you who have been coming to some of my classes, my essentials class in Usul al-Fiqh, this lamb here, well takun, this lamb here is lamb al-amr. And that means that it's wajib, you have to do it. Let there be, whenever there's an ayah that starts with let there be, or let you do this, or let him do this. And this means it is obligatory to do it. Let there be, among you a group of people who call to good and they command that which is good and they forbid that which is evil and they are the successful ones so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we have to give da'wah and likewise Allah azza wa jal said ud'u ila sabili rabbik bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan Ud'u here is a command, and a command, al-amr yufid al-wujub. Commands mean it's wajib. A command to the Prophet ﷺ and to his ummah after him. Because in general, every command that is for the Prophet ﷺ is for his ummah unless there is an evidence to say that it's only for him. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good preaching. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَدُعُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرَةً أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعْنِ Say this is my way, I call to Allah upon certain knowledge, me and all those who follow me. Me and all those who follow me. Excellent. So now we have understood the general concept of da'wah is that it is from the wajibat. But is it fardu ayn or fardu kifaya? Is it wajib upon every individual Muslim? Or is it wajib upon the Muslims as a collective, as a whole? The majority of the scholars held the opinion that it is fardu kifaya. Because Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ Let there be from you, a group among you. And amongst you, let there be a group. And the meaning of a collective responsibility is, there have to be enough people doing the job. If enough people are not doing the job, everyone is sinful. If there are not enough giving people giving da'wah, in Dubai, everyone in Dubai is sinful. Until there are enough people to fulfill that need and that responsibility. Otherwise, everyone is sinful. And if there are enough people, then the, there is, the responsibility is waived from the others. It's kind of like a firefighter or a policeman. I mean, there have to be enough firefighters in a city Otherwise, that they can handle all of the fires that might break out. If there are not enough, then that's a responsibility on everyone. I and mean, everyone shares the damage, the blame for that. And if there are enough, then 
we don't need to, you know, it's no need for everyone else to do it. However, we have to note that fardu kifaya can easily become fardu ain. So a collective obligation can easily become an individual obligation. When might that happen? Well, that might happen when you are the only one who can take that responsibility on. For example, you're the only one in your town. Let's talk about, for example, those who came from, from, from outside of, of, of the UAE. In your hometown, you're the only person in your hometown, the only person who has the knowledge to tell people about Allah. Or the only person who has been guided to the right way of practicing Islam. Or the only person who knows a little bit of Arabic. Or the only person who knows how to read the Quran. Or you are here in Dubai and you have a non-Muslim neighbor. And you're the only person who has a connection with them. That you can, you know, you can actually speak to them about Islam. In this case, it becomes responsible or an individual responsibility for you to do. Individually. Because now we can't do it as a, we can't do it as a collective, we can't do it as a group. We have to do it as an individual because simply there isn't a group to fall back on. And there's no doubt that we are in great need of people in this day and age to give da'wah. In its broader sense, da'wah to non-Muslims, that is our primary concern. And da'wah to those Muslims who have strayed far away from the message of Islam and the right path and calling them to come back to it and calling them to come back to the message that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent with. So now let us look at the characteristics and start some of the seerah. Uh, I haven't given a story for every characteristic but towards the end I've introduced some of the characteristics with stories from the seerah. The characteristics of the da'iyah, the person who gives da'wah, what kind of character should they have? What kind of person should they be? What kind of characteristics should they have? What kind of person should they be? The answer to that is in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You, O Muhammad You, O Muhammad are upon an excellent standard of character. And the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal described the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ The best example for you to follow. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا You have in the Messenger of Allah an excellent example. Excellent example. What does that tell us about the characteristics? It tells us that if we look at the Prophet ﷺ and we look at his seerah and we look at his shama'il, the shama'il, his characteristics, his physical characteristics, his personality, how he used to be. If we look at his characteristics, we look at his personality. We look at his shama'il. What do we see? We see the perfect characteristics of the da'iyah, the one who gives da'wah. So let us look at the characteristics of the da'iyah and as we get towards the end, we start putting some of the seerah in there. Uh, and inshallah tomorrow we're going to go pretty much only into the seerah because we've given the introduction so tomorrow we're going to be focusing primarily on the seerah uh, in terms of uh, examples of giving da'wah from the seerah the first characteristic is al-ikhlas sincerity because sincerity is a requirement in every single action. In everything that you do, sincerity is a must. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
وما امروا الا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء they were only commanded nothing else just one thing that they worship Allah and they make everything in the religion for him alone Hunafa upon the religion of Ibrahim Millata Ibrahim Hanifa the religion of Ibrahim Hanif Adin al Hanif the pure religion this is what you were commanded to do to make the religion for Allah and for Allah Azza wa Jal alone not for anyone else for Allah and for Allah alone in everything that you do and da'wah is an ibadah wal ibadat tawqifiyah ibadat you have to do them the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed you you don't have the chance to just like freestyle and do it however you like you have to do da'wah the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did da'wah you can't do da'wah any other way because da'wah is a worship, an act of worship. And the acts of worship are tawqifiyya. They are restricted to the way that the Prophet ﷺ did them. And so with these two conditions we see, the first two things we need in the da'iyah is al-ikhlas wal mutaba'a, Sincerity and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And if we want an evidence for this, then there is an evidence for this in the ayah of the end, at the end of Surah Al-Kahf. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever wants to meet with his Lord, let him do righteous deeds. What are righteous deeds? Like the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ رَدْ Whoever does an action that's not in accordance with our sunnah, it will not be accepted. It's not righteous. Righteous deeds are the deeds in accordance with the sunnah. And let him not make a partner with Allah in anything. So he doesn't make a partner with Allah and he follows the sunnah. So he has righteous deeds. And this is the first any point that we want to make about the description or the characteristic of the da'ya. So whoever wants to be a da'ya because he wants to be famous or he wants to sit with a microphone and a camera in front of him or he wants to have, you know, like a million followers on Facebook or something, Instagram or something like that. This person will never be successful. They may achieve fame in the dunya, but they will not achieve anything in the akhirah except the anger of Allah and His punishment. If that is the way that they carry out their, their da'wah. And it's difficult, because when you give da'wah, automatically you get some attention. You get some, you know, some, uh, you get noticed. Because at the end of the day, you're telling people about Islam. You're not staying silent and putting down your head and you know, walking around minding your own business. You're telling people about Islam. So people come to know about you, people come to listen to you. Al-Ikhlas, Al-Ikhlas. Sincerity, sincerity. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us sincere because if Allah doesn't make us sincere, nobody can make us. We can't become sincere by ourselves. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَ أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ We couldn't be guided unless Allah had Unless Allah Azza wa had guided us, we could not be guided. The second characteristic, or the second group, because sometimes I mention more than one, of characteristics of the da'iyah is al-ilmu wal-basira. Knowledge and insight. Allah Azza wa Jal said, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةِ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي See, this is my way. I call to Allah upon certain knowledge. Me and all those who follow me. So do we call to Allah upon ignorance? Do we call to Allah when we don't really know what we're saying? And this is difficult because in da'wah you get asked questions. Non-Muslim or Muslim, you get asked questions. People will say to you, Okay, uh, I'm thinking of becoming Muslim, but I want to know this. Is it true that the Prophet ﷺ did this? 
And then you say, no, no, it's not true, of course not. In Islam, there's nothing like that. And we get some people like this. And they apologize for Islam. Is it true that your Prophet Sallallahu fought battles? Battles? No, 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 no. Our Prophet Sallallahu never walked, never did anything like that. But I read the Quran and it's mentioned here and here and here. You have to give da'wah upon knowledge. There's a way to answer that question. Say yes, but with, with justice. Fighting for who was right. Yani fighting for the weak and the oppressed, for the women and the children. Fighting for the sake of Islam. There is a way to answer. But the way to answer is not to say, no, 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 this didn't happen. Or, to, or for someone to apologize for Islam. And if someone says to you, or oh, is it true that I have to do this? Is it true in Islam I will have to pray five times a day? Pray? No, 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 it's okay. It's just, I mean, you know, if you can pray, pray. If you can't, don't. This is examples of people giving da'wah to people based upon ignorance. So the condition of the da'iyah is to give da'wah upon knowledge. Does that mean you have to know everything? Does that mean you have to be a great scholar? No. But it means you at least have to have knowledge of what you are saying. So if the only thing you know is the meaning of La ilaha illallah and what an excellent thing it is to know. And it is not, that's not, uh, that's not taking away from anybody. If the only thing you know really well is the meaning of La ilaha illallah, then give people da'wah to La ilaha illallah. But when they ask you, Shaykh, did I divorce my wife last night? Don't give them an answer. Say to them, Allahu A'lam. I don't know. Go and ask so and so. He knows the answer to your question. You give da'wah based on what you know, not based on what you don't know. Ibn al Qayyim, rahimullah ta'ala, he said, commenting on this ayah Since, da'wah, since giving da'wah to Allah, is the most noble of stations that a person can reach and the most honorable and the best of them. It can only be achieved by knowledge that this person gains da'wah, knowledge of da'wah through and gives, knowledge, gives da'wah based upon. Rather, there is a must in giving da'wah in the most perfect way that the person must be getting so much knowledge that they are racing to get knowledge and they must be racing to get knowledge and it is enough of an honor that Allah Azza wa Jal raises a person to such a high status in Islam by this knowledge and as for insight then we're going to talk about this in the examples of the seerah tomorrow. But just I wanted to highlight a few points on the topic of insight. Point number one, there are kind of different types of insight. So let's break insight into three, three categories. Having insight in yourself. Meaning you yourself have knowledge. Firm knowledge. Because insight is more than knowledge. Insight is knowledge and knowing when to apply it and how to apply it. Not crude. You know, some people have knowledge, but they're like a bull in a china shop. They don't know when to use that knowledge and when not to use that knowledge. So they have knowledge, but they're not, they're not, they don't have finesse in that knowledge. They don't have the right application. So the person himself must be a person of basira. He must know what he knows and know what he doesn't know. Because ignorance is of two types. Jahlun Basit and Jahlun Murakkab. Jahlun Basit is where you are ignorant and you know that you are ignorant. Someone says to you, what is Einstein's theory of relativity? I have no idea. This is Jahlun Basit. Simple ignorance. Basic ignorance. Because you know that you don't know it. You say, I don't know it. I have no idea. And the fact that you know that you don't know it means that it's very minor. But the dangerous one is jahlun murakkab. What we call compound ignorance. Where you don't know that you are ignorant. 
So someone asks you the same question, you start writing down letters. A, B, C, squared, three, five, six, seven times four, it's this one. You think you know the answer, but actually you don't know the answer at all. This is the worst kind of ignorance and the most dangerous. We call it compound ignorance. So part of Basira is knowing what you know and knowing what you don't. And how many of the du'at, good brothers, good sisters who give da'wah to Allah, how many of them fell into big problems in their life because they didn't know what they know and what they don't. So they were asked about something they don't know and they thought they did know and they give the wrong answer. So they misguide themselves and they misguide other people. So we have to be careful that part of Basira is we know what we know and we know what we don't. In Dawah you will get tricky questions. You will get hard questions that are hard to answer. People love honesty. We're going to come to honesty in a minute. People love honesty. Don't be frightened to say to them, I don't know. Sometimes you have, you have a Dawah situation with an aggressive, you know, an aggressive person. And he wants to really wipe out Islam. Says, there's a contradiction in the Quran in this ayah in this place and he reads you the ayah you haven't memorized the ayah and he reads it to you in Arabic you don't know what it is or he reads the translation in English and you don't know what the Arabic is what should you do give him a half-baked answer the best case scenario is he'll stop talking but then later on he'll realize you lied to him and then he'll never trust you and listen about to about Islam ever again the worst case scenario is he'll realize on the spot that you're not telling the truth and then he will do all of those things plus he will embarrass you on the spot by saying you're wrong, you don't even know the ayah. So what should you do? Say to him, I'm not sure about this ayah that you're reciting to me. But I know that Islam is the correct and true religion. And I know that my Lord would never say something which was inappropriate or anything which was oppressive to anyone. And I'm not sure about the details of this ayah you're reciting to me. I'm not quite sure what it is that you mean. I'm not 100% sure, but I will find out and I will get back to you. Know what you know and know what you don't know. And the second type of basira is insight about the person you're giving da'wah to. There are some really funny stories yani, about this, even though yani, we're mostly talking about Sira, so we're not going to go into too many stories, but sometimes yani, one or two. Of a man, and this is a true story, and the man is outside of the masjid, just outside of the door of the masjid, and there's a Christian. And he's raising his voice, and he's saying, you know, your Bible, it's like this. Your Bible, it has this many contradictions. In Matthew, verse this, verse that, chapter this, chapter that, and he's going full steam. And the Christian is nodding. Yeah, really? Okay. Wow, I didn't know that. So he's getting even more, you know, like he's getting even more uh, happy and even more kind of confident. Yeah, and in your Bible, and all the way, and the end of the day, he finishes after maybe 10 to 15 minutes, of telling this Christian and the Christian is smiling and nodding and the Christian says I don't believe in the Bible though Musiba. the person was Christian by name like many people that happened in England like many people are Christian by name he says but I, I don't really believe in the Bible and they were nodding out of just you know courtesy out of just you know like politeness they were nodding and saying, yeah, really, you know, like. But actually, they didn't believe in the Bible at all. So many times it happens. You presume things about people. But part of Basira is knowing the person you're giving da'wah to. Which is why when you begin da'wah, one of the best things you can do is if you don't know the person, like you haven't found out about them, ask them about themselves before you start talking. Because you can find out much, much more about who they are and about, uh, about what it is that they believe.
And finally, basira, the third point, basira in acting upon what you know. Because nobody, nobody will ever accept da'wah from a person who doesn't practice what they preach. Now, I'm not saying sometimes you have to just give da'wah even though you don't practice it. You have to say it. And it's the lesser of two evils. But in reality, people will not accept from you unless they see you practice what you preach. Telling people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ ihsana." Be good to your parents. And then he sees you being terrible to them. And he sees you disrespecting them. And he sees you ignoring them and, and mistreating them and disobeying them. He's going to say, who is this? And if you want an example of that from modern day, look at the Christian church. It's full of priests who say something and do something completely different. Do you tell the people to do good but you forget yourself? As Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah and does good deeds and says, indeed, I am from the Muslims. Who calls to Allah and then what? Calls to Allah and then does good deeds. Calls to Allah, does good deeds. So you have to practice what you preach. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just to give you one, because I promised I would give you at least one from the seerah any before. It's coming, but it, the introduction takes time. The Prophet Sallallahu used to pray until his feet were sore. Till his feet swollen, swollen up. They came to him, they said, Oh Messenger of Allah, why do you pray when your feet are swollen? When Allah has forgiven your sins. Okay, you're telling us we have to pray. No problem. We will pray. But you're forgiven for everything. You're forgiven for what has come before, what will come after. You're forgiven. So why do you do it? Afala akuna abdan shakura. Shouldn't I be a grateful slave? So what did they see from the Prophet Sallallahu They saw what? They saw that everything he told them to do, he did it himself. And that's why people loved to take from him along with the other characteristics. And I have... And he's still a good number of characteristics, inshallah. But the time is up. So what we're going to do is this. Tomorrow, inshallah, we have a much longer session. I think we have two hours tomorrow. What we're going to do, inshallah, is we're going to finish the characteristics. Then we're going to look at the seerah examples of the early da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ in Makkah. And then we're going to look at examples of the Prophet ﷺ sending his companions to give da'wah and what he told them to do. All of that, we're going to try and squeeze it, inshallah. Uh, to the best of my ability, I will squeeze it into uh, two hours tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. But this was an important introduction to get us to understand what is about to come. So we don't take examples and misunderstand them. So that's why I did it like this. Uh, time is up now, inshallah. So that is all we have time for. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us and from you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who call to his way upon knowledge and with wisdom. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala nabiyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.